Look up in the sky at the birds that play. It's- Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. And you're listening to The Krypton Report. Welcome to The Krypton Report Podcast. I'm your host, Tyler, the Superman of Blue, the man of tomorrow. And with me is my host, James Flippin' Cole, the man of tomorrow, the Superman of Red. What's up, James? What's going on? Man Not of Steel. Much. Woohoo! <laughs> so, let's see here. Get everything loaded. Not a whole lot of news uh, this week. Just a couple small things. We uh, we're going to record this show. Uh, uh, what do you call it, Jamie? And we just didn't get to on Sunday, so here we are. We're a little behind on this one, so we apologize. Trying to keep up with everything, but let's get into the news, and then we'll get into. Me adjusting my microphone because things keep getting bumped around. Um, but yeah, let's get into some stuff here. So, what we got here? All right. What stuff first, we got, Tyler? First piece of news is kind of funny, not really news, but my kids have been on a trek of rewatching all of Teen Titans Go. Like they've just been like in hardcore Teen Titans Go mode, and it's just been playing constantly. So that's been fun. Uh, also, I officially now own this. I did not have it. I've been wanting to get it for a while. And it was on sale or it was $9.99 on Amazon for Shaquille O'Neal as Steel. Um, it was on Max for a while. They took it off. They kept playing with this. So I just bought it to add to my DC collection. And it's just funny because like it's not even like really marketed. As a DC movie, Same. absolutely though. I mean, look at it. it's it's all shiny and brand new. It's it's Got you know a brand this is from, new DVD of Steel. Well, this is from the Warner Archive collection too. So oh wow, nice. Yeah, that should. Uh, I was almost like, oh, can I watch that? I'm like, yes, and you will, because we'll have to get your attention. But the big news is, da dun da Bring this up. We have a Kent family home. This is going to be the Kent farm for Superman. Uh, you know, it's still, people are still calling it legacy. And I think I kind of missed that just because it gave it its own identity and we could say legacy. Now when we just say Superman, it's kind of like Superman what? Um, but yeah, this is the most simple, plain house. That, it's like a country house. It looks ordinary. Like I pass all the time when I'm driving, you know, without really being a farmhouse kind of thing. But yeah oh yeah i see i see houses like that a lot in the country around here but uh uh not kansas but filming in uh lagrange georgia, georgia is the yep. kent farm Mm-hmm. yeah that's so. pretty cool um i mean just looking up at it i mean it's got like a farm drive and and um i mean it's easy enough to put uh to put farm stuff out there in the middle of nowhere yeah if they needed to put up a barn or if they just need to bring in some Some cattle or corn or just put uh digitally put it in whatever they do you know i mean i would be i will laugh if they put like a digital cornfield in right here but at the same time i need my corn for my superman property okay uh and then the other piece of news we got is we have a lombard beck bennett is the latest actor to join James Gunn's Superman, which will be which is filming in Atlanta. Sources are saying that uh, he will be playing Steve Lombard. So cool, <laughs> you know. All there was an image I saw that said, uh, or I didn't see an image, but I saw something. Somebody said that he had the that he he was rocking a, a familiar mustache. So yeah, I, don't know I saw if that's that true. too. I saw that too. Uh, I just went with the. This screenshot here from the Hollywood Reporter. So we have, you know, the reliable source um, that we can all reference. Usually the Hollywood Reporter is pretty much on it and correct with their their reporting. So that's exciting, you know? Like, all we need now is Ron Troop. And we'll, we'll have our whole Daily Planet kind of in it. Maybe a Cat Grant, a small cameo. Yeah, yeah. It, it'd be cool, you know, if you're going to spend some time in the Daily Planet to see some, um, hear some familiar names. Yeah, it it would be cool if they did that. So, 
yeah, I'm uh I'm uh I'm excited. I'm excited. Just, you know, really bringing in the whole cast of a uh, a Superman. But, you know, that's all the news. So, yeah. Let's uh let's bring it back around. Okay. All right. So, what would you like to talk about next, James, on our ongoing agenda? Um, I mean, I guess Superboy. All right. We're going to talk about Superboy. We are continuing our coverage of Superboy. Um, this week's episode is season one, episode two, A Kind of Princess. Now, the it aired Oct- Saturday, October 15th, 1988, and it um, had a 5.8 on IMDb. Thanks. But it says, Clark falls for Sarah, the daughter of a crime boss. Both Clark and Sarah get stuck in the middle between rival crime syndicates. And it's up to Superboy to save everyone. All right, James, how are you feeling about this? Um <laughs> I I laughed at the guys who were sweating profusely. Cuz they're filming you know, in Florida. Well, I mean, they're in Florida in in the 80s. Um Yeah. I think I think they're sweating for another reason. But <laughs> would it happen to be the Wolf of Wall Street? Yeah, very, very much the same type of deal. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Um the uh the way the crime bosses acted towards each other, it was so um it was so generic, it was so cheesy. Um I, I know, had a good right? time with it. Um of course. Clark would kind of be seeing the uh, the daughter of like the biggest crime lord. Yeah, like so, you know, at the beginning we have a car bombing that Clark saves uh, the guy who ends up being, you know, the dad of of Sarah, and I'm just like, Clark's got a little, uh, you know, he's got a little swagger, a little something, something, you know going on here like this clark is i'm actually liking john newton's clark a lot yeah i i agree um he's he's definitely um you know he he's just he's just himself as a person Mm -hmm. um he's not so uh exaggerated in in any way especially like a somewhat clumsy sort of way Mm -hmm, Um, mm -hmm. you know just just a a regular person talking with his friends um talking with girls um but he's still uh he still holds back you know the way that he the way that he left um left the uh the daughter uh, I forget her name. After she tri- Sarah, after she like kissed him at the dance, yeah, and and then he left her there. My favorite part is, um, we see him like fly, and you, we see him use a super breath, saving her. Um, but it, um, what do you? Dang, I can't talk. I'm using my handy dandy notebook. Um, but I liked how he like was, you know. The security guard guy was all about, you know, like, oh, I got hit in the head and they took her and he like uses, you know, his vision to see he hasn't, he doesn't have stitches, no bandage, anything. Uh, what do you call it? So, uh, I like, I like that. Just, I liked him being more investigator in this. And instead of just kind of being there, I don't know what, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah, he, he, no, I liked, I liked how he, I, I like how he, um, 
was able to uh, clue in that the that the security guard who was supposed to be guarding her was in in on it and um, helped kidnap the daughter, helped kidnap Sarah for the the rival crime organization. And what I think is interesting is we see like the dad won't give up the syndicate, the crime syndicate to save his daughter. And she's like, dad, give him what he wants. And he won't do it. And we really see where her dad is in his whole mindset. And then of course, Superboy uses his freeze breath to save her. And it's a really great scene. And um, of course, Sarah's leaving school. And yeah, I liked Clark how he, yeah, I liked how he froze his entire hand around the detonator. And we have uh, we got Sarah's leaving, and at the end, Clark and Lana have a really good conversation. And she's like, "Did you guys ever spend the night together?" Ooh, Lana wants to know some details. And he's like, no, Lana. Yeah. We never she shared wants Clark any more. to spill the tea. <laughs> we never shared any more than just a passionate kiss. She's like, ah. Oh, dum, dum, dum. All in all, it's a pretty interesting episode. And like I said, I uh, I get more interested in John's Clark because he's not playing like he's not trying to be Chris. What would you rate the episode? Um, I mean, seven out of ten. Hmm. Yeah, know. I'm kind of a six. Yeah. So. I mean, it was it was an organized crime episode, you know. Uh, creative way with the detonator. I uh, I liked it. You know, for for it being. For it being what it is, the show in the in the late eighties, there kids are heading out to bed. Everybody, so good times, good times. Keep distracting me, children. But all right, so let's dive into this week's episode of my adventures with Superman. And this week's episode was pretty awesome. Not gonna lie, it was entitled. Um, full, full metal scientist. Clark's life falls apart as the general goes into hiding in Clark's apartment. Meanwhile, Jimmy's struggling with being a leader, and Lois goes toe to toe with Vicky Vale as they track down the missing scientist. All right, James, what you thinking on this? Um, I mean, like you said, well, your re- your reaction, your spoiler-free reaction saying that it was pretty dope um, got me excited. So um, I was excited to watch it. And then when I finally put it on uh, Sunday afternoon, um, I was really stoked. Um, you know, starting out saving Silas Stone from a, a building fire. And then, of course, he... Uh, deletes the evidence and is let and is let go, and then you see John Henry Irons on the freaking uh, the commercial, and he's working for Ameritech, like right there, or Amertech. Yeah, and they I believe they called it Amertech. I, I was I got to get used to that. I, I don't know why I just Ameritech Amertech sounds good, looks good. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, just just an awesome episode. Um, Superman gets a new power. Yeah, we'll we'll talk about that. Um, but I mean, let's see what all was in this. So we learned that Silas Stone's son Victor is his son is between nine and ten years old. We learned that Palmer Tech is hiring. Um, and um. We, of course, we got John Henry Irons in a steel suit, and we have the 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 robots being called the Metallos that are powered by like this energy that makes a Brainiac symbol. 
So that's interesting. Um, we have a yeah, drop it seems of like seems like uh, uh, part of the Metallos is at least based on the um, Kryptonian technology. And Different we have than the Omax that John Henry moved back because of his niece Natasha, who's a flame bro. And we have live wire attack. But let's, uh, you know, we have Sam Lane staying. And one of the funniest parts is at the beginning of Clark um, trying to uh, sneak into his apartment. And he's like yelling at Jimmy to give him his clothes. And he tries to do without Sam seeing. So that's pretty funny. Um, there was, yeah, there was so much good, so much, so much fun stuff in this, uh, in this episode. It's probably the, one of the best episodes just all around in general. Just of the, the, the way, yeah, the way that, the way that everything was, the way that all the characters were tied together. This episode was great. I mean, for all the world building that it did of everything, it was really great. Oh yeah, so much world building. Uh, Silas with a son, son Victor, of course. Um, uh, uh, John Irons, uh, his niece Natasha, uh, Amertek, Weston. Um, like the the mention of Metallos in a way. Um, the steel suit as a first responders unit. And I just I like the depiction of like corporate greed of the guy who's just like, I didn't know this was gonna happen. And John Henry's like, Yeah, we 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 told you like this was gonna happen if you try to suck too much power and do these to these costumes. And he completely, you know, screwed up. And at the end, like I literally wrote in my notes and I put is Lex going to take over Ameritech and then boom, he took it over and was like, and it's Lex Corp now. Yeah, that was pretty awesome. Um, you know, kind of being totally backed by the government the way it is, you know what I mean? Like getting Lex in on, on the ground floor with some like massive resources and uh, government funding and contracts and things to work for with. It was it was pretty awesome. Speaking, pretty awesome. Let's let's talk about that new Superman power. Um, is it new? Not exactly. I don't think so. But what no. are your thoughts? No, your I thoughts? mean it's not it's not new. It's definitely something we've seen before. Um, something they've they've mentioned in comics. Something we actually saw in a in um, uh, All Star Superman. The Thank animation you. adaptation. Thank you, because um, that's exactly where my head went. The exact um, same thing. Yeah, he he's been said to have a bio uh, a bioelectric aura um, around him, which like protects his suit, and he can like extend it, and that's why things don't crush when he carries them, uh, fall apart like they normally should. Just some different explanations over the years. Um, but like, like it's the only real like vis- visual representation we've ever had that I know of is All Star Superman, um, and now this. I mean, you know, we've seen him glow blue and things like that before, but this time he actually extended his aura around things. Um, he did it on accident, saving Silas, and then he did it on purpose to contain the 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 fusion react the fusion reaction before uh, John shut down the towers by smashing the columns. Yeah, it was, it was pretty awesome. And I, I've seen people online talking about like, what, what is this? What is this power? And I'm like, like what power do they give Superman now? And I'm like, you know, the, his whole aura thing has been discussed. It's been in comics. It's not that well known, but it is a, it is something. So Yeah. I thought it was pretty cool. But speaking of pretty cool, I finally got something. Hold on. Watch this. (gasps) 
<laughs> nice. Nice. Uh, he got the uh, he got the blue Superman poster that matches my red one. Yeah, I just gotta. Yeah, I just gotta find a I'm rearranging some stuff to hang it up. So I got a frame. Yeah, Boy. my mine's. I'm going the wrong way. <laughs> mine's right there, but on this angle, can't see much of it. So the the last thing we're gonna discuss on this episode for this week. Um, this is our first episode of June it was supposed to be out Sunday. Um, as we kind of dive into the start, we talked about June was going to be a look at, uh, the new 52 Superman. And we're going to kind of just look at the Superman title. Um, not action comics because action was a little bit different. It was a little bit more well received and it existed kind of for the first part in like five years past and the new 52s kind of confusing because you had this five-year time jump and some stuff took place back then and then some stuff took place what was like the current time but we're looking at just the superman book and uh so we're gonna discuss the right tonight the first what i like the new 52 is very much written for trades which i liked about the new 52 it was yes so the first six issues of what's known as um, what price for tomorrow. And it's by a great, I would would say a really good creative team. And, you know, not to really by George Perez and pencils by Jesus Marino for the first, let's see, George and Jesus do issues one, two, four, and then George Perez and Scott uh, something I'll look at when we get there does issues three and five. And then Dan Jurgens finishes off with, with issue six, which I find interesting of like why he was only doing, you know, five issues, like a six issue arc. Did something happen? But, um, you know, the first thing I'm going to start off with, is I remember this this image of the new 52 Superman of him holding up the Daily Planet and the new suit and be like, okay. Um, but we'll, let's get into it. Well, yeah. I know people kind of like were, were, were have freaked out about it since just because he's like glowing red eyes, the flames from underneath and the crumbling Daily Planet um, globe like like uh, evil Superman or something, you know? Yeah. And here's the thing. Look, looking back. Okay. Um, this, this really is not the reboot that people think it is. It is like a very weird restart point because this book starts with the old daily planet being destroyed. And they knew basically Morgan Edge has bought the Daily Planet and it's his new Daily Planet. Um, it very much feels like we're just destroying the old and starting something new, but we're not starting from square one. Yeah. Um, like there's some history when you're reading through this book. Like, so you you see the past when they talk uh, when he's in just the um, the jeans and the T-shirt. Um, and the and the short cape, uh, you see that you when he uh, is only able to leap tall buildings in a single bound and not fly. And they talk about how he's uh, continuously getting stronger. Um, the suit that he wears, he got from um, Brainiac. You know, in this um, issue, they they talk about like the past, um, like Clark. He's out doing his reporting for the Daily Planet, but he's not there. Um, There's this past history of him and Lois as a friendship. They're almost at odds at the moment. And, you know, we have this fireball attack. And, you know, it's it's like a sentient being in itself that Clark is trying to stop. And I'm reading through here. 
And it had been a while since I had read this series. And, you know, I, I'm going through this and they say like the, it was a fire that attacked and no one was burnt. And I'm trying, I was trying to remember, you know, and then the issue, the issue ends where we have Clark showing up at Lois's and there's another dude there. And I, I, I just, I always think it's hilarious. Like this is such a trope for stories of like a woman answers the door or a man answers the door. And then the other, someone else is there with them who says, Hey, who is it? And then they show up in the background. Like, do you, does that happen in real life? Like, do you answer the door? And then like, you're talking and then Jamie's like, Hey, who is it? And walks up behind you or, you know, like it's always just such a cliche move. Uh, right. Yeah. Um, it's, it's almost like, Oh yeah. Hey, what's going on? I want to be part of this. What's how, let me how's just, it going? Let me just Who's show at the up door? with no shirt on. <laughs> well, they were celebrating. Yeah. And, and like, then they talk about Clark as he's leaving. He's such a loner. Never lets anyone get close to him. Yeah. I tried um, getting, I tried setting him up with some friends, but he maybe right. he's pining for you. Oh, well, shut like, up and get back in bed. Yeah. And it's, like and Galaxy it's, Global, like bought the Daily Planet. So like they've got this big TV division and stuff now. And Lois is like the top producer. You know, and so like that was it's such a gut punch kind of to end on. It really tells you like this isn't your Superman. Um, you know, Lois is not with Clark and they have a weird strained friendship. And I don't know how you felt reading it, but I really wasn't enjoying this. Um, you know, Clark, we see him interact with General Lane. And of course, General Lane's threatening him with Lois. We see a little bit of Clark and Lois's friendship. Um, and um, it's a well, really, it's a, I don't, I don't, I didn't like this story that much. And I just kept thinking to myself, this is how you reboot Superman. This is how you bring him back. And this is the first story you tell where it really doesn't feel like, you're being introduced to stuff as well as you're being told what's not the normal anymore. Like this isn't, this isn't how it is anymore. We have this and we have this and it's like, you're stepping into a new chapter instead of starting with Superman. Number one, it's like, I feel like we're, we're not, we didn't really start a new, we just kind of continued from another point. Well, I mean, I, that is also, a part of um, the new 52, as it were, you know, it wasn't like it, they they don't have all new origins. Right. For and that's they... all the characters, you know, um, they're, they're varying characterizations um, and more of a, a modern world. Um I mean, it's it's like an Ultimates reboot for the DC universe, but not but as edgy or or. But not even as concise because the Ultimates really gave you new origins and really took you back to the beginning and just started over. This is like we're starting. Well, something this was. Well, I mean, yeah, it was, but it was supposed to. It's supposed to be a, a continual uh, continuity. Um, it's supposed to be the the canon moving forward um being able to go back to a younger age for these characters and tell different stories but that's the thing they're not they're, they're going back and telling different stories but like in this setup we're just being told like okay this isn't the daily planet anymore clark and lois have this they're they're not together but we haven't seen them actually ever meet like you have to go back and look at action and action is like set in the past so, and but I'm saying like, if I just, if I was just picking up Superman, like, oh, new Superman, number one, oh, I don't I feel mean, like this is a number one. Like if I'm a new <laughs> reader coming in, like, I'm like, what, what did I miss? Because the whole idea of number one is supposed to bring you in as a new reader to catch you up and you understand the stories. And this feels uh, like, I no, missed no, yeah, well, no, no new 52 ever did because it wasn't. 
because it wasn't a bring it back to square one and start at at one. And that's and that's point like like this whole book, you know okay. that w- that was kind of the the when they dropped you in um when the justice league was formed you know when Je- mm-hmm. when justice league started like the new 52 had a lot of um uh they tried to create a, a more condensed timeline which is so, i mean but like this story is just not getting me. They they went they went from they went from the the seventy five year the seventy five years of stories before that to like this is a new world that's not bound by seventy years of history. Mm-hmm. In yeah. particular, you know, it's not. But I'm saying just reading this story, they keep referencing stuff that I'm like, we I what is this? Where is this story? Where is this? Right. This so, well, when I kind of started reading again, I, I started in on the new 52. So when I jumped in, I kind of already had a, a history with Superman, but I just jumped into the story and I kind of, and I picked up where I went, where it put me in. Right. And I, I get that. And, That's it gives what I you, and it gives you history as you, continuously move forward and i get that but i'm saying if i'm a new reader and i'm seeing superman one well are you are you considering like okay i mean so yeah you're saying a new reader nobody who knows superman i mean that's hard to say you have you have the history of all of that you don't you know what i mean you're still bound by you know clark and lois are lovers they're married and all of this stuff you know what i mean you still have that so I mean, when, I you, do. when you jump into a number one and you see that they have this this friendship that I but mean, a, for the most part, as as it's a well, friendship that's the established. Issue, it's, it's established. established. Yeah. We've never seen. But they're them. not. But they're not lovers. So they're just never friends, seen, though. But we don't even see that. We see them almost as a frenemy. Like they talk tension. to each other, and he goes right to her apartment, especially late at night. I mean, they're and friends. You just, and you just see like there's history, but we're not privileged to any of like the introduction. We're just being like you said, dropped in. And the whole point of the new fifty two was this to bring in new readers. And I mean, I just, and you're just, and then you just, I don't know. You got secret origins. You got birthright. I mean, origin stories from the time they're a kid to now. I don't know. It's just an established Superman story. Um, I mean. <laughs> it's not an origin story, but it is a number one. Right. And that's what I'm saying. That's my problem with it. Is I don't know. I'm not looking for an origin story. I'm though. not looking for an origin. Not, I don't want to know what happens. Like that doesn't, it doesn't get into that, but I want to feel like I'm growing with the character. Cause I don't want to be told like an issue one, like, Oh, we're tearing down the old daily planet. Here's the new one. Oh, okay. Well, so you don't, you don't care about the daily planet. You're a new reader. Yeah. But <laughs> you don't saying, care like, about the daily planet. You do. But a new reader doesn't. So, but I'm like, why not just start with it? So, because they're really telling you in the first issue, we're tearing down the past and doing this. So, I just really find it unbalanced with what they're trying to convey with this. And then I feel like through this whole first set of issues, okay, up to up to number five, basically we learn that these, how would you say it? sentient tiny microscopic creatures have basically turned into superman's powers like a manifestation kind of of his powers and they're attacking him um and we 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 realize that these bug like microscopic creatures have basically replicated superman so for some point of time when do you think it happened <laughs> well, I mean, so it doesn't so the only the only thing that it gives you is that um it was when he got the suit uh from Brainiac's ship and five years they ago. were in five years ago and they were in um they were in a bottled city. Um so I'm guessing something got damaged. Yeah, a a a 
a bottle got destroyed and and their microscopic or nanite type civilization um, attached itself to him and yeah somehow eventually created these like it's it's like powers because it it they like the fire turns everything to fire so everything they touch they like replicate on yeah they they turn into and become it um it's like uh it, it's almost like a, a parasite an organism taking over every cell of what it touches Yeah, it, it's very weird because let's jump to let's jump to issue five. And issue five had a panel in it that kept making me go back and forth because we see Superman holding a guy and letting him go. We see Lois saying, Clark, I know you can hear me. Please pick up your phone. And Superman drops the guy and she yells, Clark. And I was like, does she know he's Superman? I'm like, no, she doesn't. That's later. But it just feels like they set that up. And then um, you know, that you flip the page, so to speak, or click the the panel and we see Superman is in space and we're like, okay, so Superman's in space. <laughs> yeah. Then, um, well, so like you said, like they replicated him um, in a way, like, so they, they were able to um, mimic his powers and, and look like him. Uh, but they're like psychic. They they are like microscopically keeping him under in space. Like yeah. they can't like eliminate him, or they can't take him over as much as, or as quickly as a like a human body. Um, but the uh, the the lowest thing, Hollering Clark, like she doesn't have a concrete proof, but there is some sort of um, shot when he talks about him have been being in smallville um like he blacked out he couldn't remember something um there is a shot where she does um she does see something uh she has something on her computer and it looks like superman flying away from the cemetery yeah so i would say at the beginning of issue five is where they take over him would you say that? Would you agree with that? Uh, yes, I believe. I believe that's where it is. And then like, it's all this, like he's not acting like himself throughout the issue. And then we get to issue six and Supergirl shows up and catches um, the guy that Clark, that Superman dropped. And there's, they start battling. And there's a lot of people discussing like who this person is, how she can take, you know, the attacks and stuff like that. And she's just wearing a suit. Like she doesn't have like the kind of armor like he has. Um, and then there's like this weird connection when Superman gets hit, the real Superman in space feels it. And then we get more, like you said, the history in this issue of what these creatures are. Um, and then <clears throat> Superman, the real Superman swoops down and takes it. We see two of them together. And um, it feels like, you know, towards the end, like he he goes and he battles and fights the other one, yada, yada, yada. And, you know, they basically dissipate and fall apart. And then there's conversation between Supergirl and Superman at the end. And then uh, Clark is in the hospital meeting Heather Kelly, which is really weird because I had a friend in uh, high school, college. Her name was Heather Kelly. So it was just kind of weird to uh, see that. And then the you know it ends kind of where Clark's talking like him and Heather can't be together and Lois is outside the room, and um, yeah it uh you know I I like the last issue better, but I just I did not like this story like it just felt weird for this to be your first story to introduce Superman to a new reader, um you know the the characters of Jimmy and Perry and stuff were very um very you know played down and lois is all about being a tv reporter which they tried that in the 70s yeah they're they're underutilized a little bit um in that regard perry and um jimmy 
uh, Lois, I think, I mean, she's not, she's not really a reporter. She's actually like the producer yeah. of the show. So she decides what new, what is news um, and, and what goes on. So that's, um, uh, it's interesting. It's a different, it's a different turn. It's, it's a, it's definitely more of a promotion, you know, mm-hmm. um, kind of like a, kind of like the, like an editor, kind of like uh, the chief who decides what goes where. So it is, it is interesting. Cause like she's doing the, like the television media side of Perry's doing the print side. And there's arguing about Clark saying, you know, Prince not dead. Um, but it, it is just like I said, interesting going back and looking at just right. the new 52 well, Superman title and how it was. And I said, yeah. it's interesting that you have a writer doing the first five issues of a story, and then the, the conclusion is written by someone different. Dan Jurgen steps in and we'll be doing the next section. Well, uh, yeah, that's that's very interesting. See, like I remember when I was reading this that I was reading action along with it. So like it it helped establish some uh some sort of a timeline to begin reading, you know? Mm-hmm. Um the and that's kind of how the 50 the new 52 was really um built was was through that establishment of the timelines through the first um handful of issues of most of the books, you know? Yeah. It is, so, it is interesting. reading this alone and in, and definitely considering like a first issue kind of a thing like yeah it's not an origin story i mean would it grab some people maybe would it put some people off because it's not possibly but i just um, felt like it was a week it was a week it feels like almost like a filler superman story in some ways with some of the beats of it and some of it i was like okay with but right you know. well they talk about they talk about brainiac you know they they talk about the suit and how it and how the suit is and what it is now um i mean the idea of how they got there like but the first the first villain we get is some sort of um alien race with um machines that were able to mimic his powers and then create like a a a life-size recreation of him and you know part of this experiment is just looking at the superman title um and then looking later at just the action title and do they work separate from each other or do you need them to like you said do you need to read them together to really understand what's going on because you know sometimes you just want to read a title i'm just going to read superman Right. And well, as a Superman fan, also, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, you're fine. So, like I said, we're just, yeah, we're just the the new 52 is very much chopped into like the first part and then it changes to the the DCU part where he gets depowered. And we'll probably look at that later on down the line, um, through this run. But I, I wanted to point out what I found very fascinating is you know, having DC Unlimited Ultra. I went to volume thinking, oh, can read it in the trades, but they don't have everything in the trades. It has, if you look at it, it has the volume two secrets and lies, volume three, volume four, volume five. And then it shifts to when they do the DCU, where we do volume one, which is the truth, volume two, return to glory. And then savage dawn and then the final days of superman so they don't even have everything like you'd expect like you know i expected to go to volume and see all the trades of the new 52 right there and it's not yeah oh yeah um it it took me a little bit to find this the the collection um it, it just wasn't my first search i had to look at some different things um to get to it so and like I said, um, we're gonna do but as but as you know as a superman fan um like whether you're a first time reader or you know you know some superman and you've never read the new 52 um you know i enjoy a lot of the new 52 i've read quite a bit of it um 
so like reading this, you'll see a lot of names, um, uh, a lot of names for a lot of different things. Um, just a lot of Easter eggs for names for using, um, for, for, uh, like, uh, what was it? Um, there was, well, there was Fleischer in there. Um, mm -hmm. there was, uh, there's a couple others, um, I'm blanking on right now, but, um, and then, and then bringing in like the collector of worlds, um, you know, there's different things looming out there. There's other stories and then just all the Easter eggs, um, are really fun to see and read. So, uh, as a Superman fan. Yeah. I mean, it is. And like I said, we're, we're looking at this, you know, through a special kind of set of, of lenses of, does it work? Does it hold up? Does it, is it something that just like the singular title, does it work or do you need more than just the singular title. Do you need to be reading everything to enjoy what it is that they're, they're giving us. So it's going to be our experiment. And I don't know how far we're going to go down this rabbit hole just yet, but I know that June was the month I wanted to kind of look at it and kind of experiment with it. So, but we will get through at least the first three volumes this month, maybe the first four. And then uh, we'll see. But I think the first three is what we're going to do because of volume four, I think, trickles into something that we're going to do in July. But hey, that's it for today's episode. You know, we got a lot of people, you know, out there to save. James got to go fight crime. I do want to say that this weekend, um, it's the 7th through the 9th, is Superman Celebration in Metropolis, Illinois. Kristen Crooks, um, Nuclear Man himself, Mark Powell. Brandon Ralph and uh, Bitsy Tullock will all be there. So um, I wanted to go, but I made a pack with my wife. We're going next year for my birthday celebration, even though my birthday is in February for the year of Superman. So, yeah, I wish I wish I could go. But that is all. <clears throat> Man, my throat <clears throat> choked. Woo. Let us know your feedback. Give us, you know, on our show notes, cryptonreportpod at gmail.com. Let us know your thoughts and remember. Look up in the sky. We want to thank you for checking out the Krypton Report podcast. And we ask you to check us out on all of our social media on Twitter X, Facebook, Instagram, Blue Sky, Hive, Threads, YouTube. We're everywhere. And if you want to be a guest on the podcast, just send us a message and let us know. If you are like Tyler and James and can't get enough super talk, check out these other podcasts. Digging for Kryptonite, Supergirl Radio, The Last Sons of Krypton, The Superboy Legacy Podcast, All-Star Superfans, Superman the Animated Podcast, The Aspiring Kryptonians, Always Hold On to Smallville, The Geek of Steel, and Truth justice and hope i am brian peters the creator and host of gravely amusing for the past 30 years i've studied the history of gods and monsters in pop culture and our world as a student of theology and history i've tried to understand evil and its impact on us as a writer i've tried to share this knowledge as a comedian i've tried to make people laugh as i do it but as a man child i'm still that scared seven-year-old boy Join me as I share the history of horror and sci-fi, discuss classic and modern pop culture, and share a creepy story or two. This podcast may scare you, it may horrify you, or it may leave you gravely amused. Listen to Gravely Amusing on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and wherever podcasts are found. Follow us on Twitter at Gravely underscore Amusing or on TikTok at Gravely Amusing. We have a $1 Patreon. Yes, I know everyone asks for money, but our $1 Patreon each month gets you commentary tracks for releasing movies, DC movies. It gets you my requel series where I pitch ideas about movie sequels, prequels, or whatever. It also gets special bonus episodes. So check that out for $1 a month. That's all we ask. Keep it cheap, keep it simple, and help us keep going. Check out the link in the show notes or Patreon Krypton Report. This is Dan Jurgens, and if you want to have a good time,
keep listening to the Krypton Report.